Hey, this is Parker McCollum, and you're watching Like a Farmer. Welcome back to another episode of Like a Farmer. Today, I'm excited to have one of my favorite Texans here, Mr. Parker McCollum. Come on. Dude, thanks for coming on the show today, yeah, I'm man. glad to be here, man. Thanks for the opportunity. And I just want everybody to know we do have Parker here in, you know, Imperial Polk County. He was excited to come to Polk County. And this is, I'll be honest with you, this is the first time that somebody's actually come to Polk County. So, I mean, what are your thoughts so far? Uh, I don't know. I don't have many. I just got off the bus and came here. I slept in pretty good. So, uh, but man, I, I like Florida as a whole. Yeah. You know, it reminds me a lot of Texas. It's like uh, Texas, if Texas had pretty beaches. You know, I, I agree, and this is – I'm going to go ahead and right off the rip, go off schedule. You think about two of the probably the top states in the country. Oh, yeah, easy. It's Florida and Texas. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Sports, taxes. Yeah. I like Georgia yeah. too, man. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big fan of Georgia, and I'm a big fan of the Carolinas. So I'm with I, you. I like it down here. You've been hitting those states hard. Yeah. I want to start from the beginning part. Conroe, Texas. That is it. That's the hometown. I mean, talk to me about just – I know you grew up. I mean, and so like a farmer, right? I mean, you knew we've we've been talking for a little bit to get you on the show mm -hmm. and celebrate the farmer and educate the people on who feeds them, who clothes them. Texas is one of the biggest ag states mm -hmm. in the country. Yeah, so you time. come from rural America, and that's what I've been trying mm -hmm. to do for the last 18 months is, like, shine light on rural America to people who just think the hamburger falls out of the sky and they just eat it. Yeah. I mean, Conroe, Texas, talk to me about that. Man, it was a pretty small town when I was a kid. Now it's, you know, I think it's the fastest growing city in the United States of America, uh, or at least like top five for several, several years now. Um, my dad was a car dealer. My mom's dad, or my mom uh, and my dad divorced when I was really young, but um, her dad owned a big concrete company in my hometown that he started when he was, I mean, almost a kid, you know, back in the 1960s. And uh, and so I've, my, it's a large reason for why that town has grown as much as it has. Yeah. Um, and uh, but he was one of the greatest cowboys to ever live. And and uh, my you know, my mom was a barrel racer. My aunt was a barrel racer. My uncle's rode rough stock. And and uh, that was just always a big part of you know our family and the lifestyle. And and uh, I spent every summer getting out of Conroe as soon as school was out and I'd go, you know, ranch for grandpa all summer long. Me and all my cousins, well, we all grew up very close every day of our lives. Um, you know, from the time we were literally born until, you know, we were out of high school. So, and still very close. So, yeah. um, and what was your grandpa's name? His name was Bobby Yancey. Okay. Yeah. He was, he was, he was judge of, of Montgomery County where I grew up when he was 23 in the 1950s. Yeah. Uh, he was a, a wild man, dude, and, and as good as God can make one. Um, but he, uh, an unbelievable cowboy, uh, spent a lot of days breaking horses and working cows for him and, uh, spent a lot of, a lot of really, really good time in my childhood with him. And, and, uh, you know, I, I grew up, my parents lived in a neighborhood, uh, in Conroe. Um, and, you know, my grandparents lived on 60 acres, you know, probably five yep. minutes away, and, uh, you know, he had two big ranches about an hour and a half north of Conroe and still have them. I still go there all the time, fish there, hunt there, yeah. uh, spend a lot of time out there. And um, it's uh, so, I, you know, you don't realize it till you're older. But, you know, now I'm like just extremely grateful uh, to have grown up like that and had those opportunities and, and, you know, been on a horse as young as I was and, and working that much. You know, grown man. I mean, it was no fancy ranching whatsoever no, i mean sure, he was yeah. he was old school cowboy absolutely uh, it was it was a real deal and uh i don't know i just got older and i really i've written a lot of songs about it and my gratitude for you know growing up like that and having those opportunities and that influence as i've gotten older has just grown so much and that's exactly how i raise my kids yeah 100 speaking of that baby boy yeah, yeah, on, the way. on the way yeah, man it's crazy i'm excited when, Thank when you. is the in date? august and now do y'all have a name for him yet Kind of. We've thrown a couple around, but nothing's gotcha. really Nothing. set in stone yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So going back to how you were uh, raised, you think about you started with your grandpa and your whole family's in ranching and mm -hmm. just straight up cowboy shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an inspiration to how you're writing your songs oh, yeah. today, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, my, you know, my, my dad and all his brothers were car dealers and still are. And my mom's side of the family was cowboy ranching. Um, just fine, fine, fine people on both sides. Uh, the, the older I get, the more I appreciate the, the people that I come from because the influences, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of had the best of both worlds. Um, played a lot of sports and grew up, you know, 
a lot of athletes around me and our family and our friend group uh, in Conroe. And, and then uh, my mom moved me to the Woodlands to go to better schools in high school. I was like one of the only people on both sides of my family going back to all of my aunts, uncles, grandparents, everybody who didn't go to Conroe High School. Yeah. Uh, which was only five minutes down the road, but it's a different world. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I really even leaned into, you know, working for my granddad even more then. And uh, I don't know, man, it's uh, – it's it it certainly peaks through my songwriting it it influences a lot you know i when i kind of sit there and try to write a song i i go back to the best days of my life and the days that are i know are never coming back and you know i just wrote a song the other day called sunny days and it's really talking about you know you know the the all of those days i spent growing up a, a kid like that yeah um so it, it 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 comes out in the songwriting it's kind of inevitable that's awesome. You write what you know, so totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. And look, I mean, I think the the genre as a whole can sometimes mm-hmm. be, hey, country is popular now, so yeah. let me just write songs, even though I don't know it. Yeah. But then you got people like you know Parker McCollum coming in who grew up doing that. Your mm-hmm. grandpa's had a big impact in your life, big time. Yeah. And you know, I come from a sixth generation citrus and cattle farm here 15 minutes from where mm-hmm. we're sitting now my grandpa still to this day wakes up every day and goes yeah. to the farm and like that just means a lot oh yeah well you hope to be like that when you're that age you do yeah mm-hmm. and so at what point because i'm sure when you're growing up you're like dude this is what i want to do when i grow up so at what point were you like all right i think i'm gonna start uh, singing you know i mean i always grew up idolizing george Strait, and yep. and uh that's a long long list of influences but a lot of the guy you know clay walker i think he lives in hempstead on a big ranch and uh tracy bird lives on a ranch and uh you know george Strait, obviously real good cowboy the real deal big landowner so i always grew up looking up to these guys i wanted to be a country singer and have my own ranch one day and run my own operation and raise my kids that way so that was a large motivation for you know, wanting to kind of take this path and, and uh, you know, tie in what I love to do with what I love to do and kind of merge the two like, you know, it's been so popular just in country music. So um, it's, uh, I mean, I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old when I really started thinking about singing country music and really started to think to myself. Wow, I love that. You know, I think I can do that. I would watch yeah. music videos or, you know, I saw like Pat Green at the Houston Rodeo and yeah. I was like 11. Uh, and I was like, I want to do that. I, for, I just resonated with me. Uh, and so, you know, the older I got, I did a project in junior high one time. You had to like, it was like predicting your future and what you wanted to do. And the mine was drive a King Ranch F-250, you know, run a big ranch and, and be a country music singer. So I'm working on it. So you're caught me, you're driving the 250? I had one. I, now I go through trucks like pairs of shoes, but I'm with I, you. I yeah. get over them real quick. But uh, now I got a Dodge Mega Cab right now. That's that I right. Love, I knew so. that. Yeah. Dodge mm-hmm. is kind of. They're they're stepping up they're the not, game. Man, I, I ram, ram. I've gone through yeah. them all. I like them all, man. And and uh, they're all such fine pickups nowadays. But uh, that's just that's what the flavor of the week is right Dude, now. Is Dodge. Crazy. I mm-hmm. just bought a new uh, GMC the other day, mm-hmm. and I went to the 500, the Daytona Ross Chastain, who's a great friend of the show. I was driving to go see him, and the GMCs are driving themselves now. Yeah. I mean, I get number one, he wins a lot of races. That boy, a, not, one, the one car is always in the mix, dude. That he boy can ride. Dude. I mean, that boy can drive for sure. Bush Light sponsors him now too. I mean, I'm I'm so glad you said that because Ross, you know, eighth generation watermelon farmer down here in Florida, mm-hmm. and has just worked his way up in the ranks, and he's a dude. Now. Well, I uh, I spent a lot of time uh, a little upset with him because I'm a big R- Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is yep. a good buddy of mine. You know, so I'm always pulling for Ricky and that number one cars. It's always there. It's always there. It's always there. Um, so back to Texas, you know, you're, you're a full Texan through and through, and you mm-hmm. talk about what I love about Texas and it, whether it's athletes, musicians, whatever it is, Texas backs Texas. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're from, and you've got the whole, I'm calling it the country at this point, but the whole state is behind you, which is really cool. You, you've got such a successful career in country music. Mm-hmm. And when you think about country music, it's Nashville. You haven't dedicated to yourself to like, hey, I'm going to move full time to Nashville. I mean, yeah. You're still living in Texas. I am. Yeah, I had. Like, a, I, I bought a house. There. I actually moved there. I was there for two years, um, and uh, right at the end of COVID, I had to when my, I put up my first. I signed my record deal and put out a song called Pretty Heart. Yep. Uh, Great song. And then COVID started like two weeks later. Yeah. So we had a number one double platinum selling song that went number one in December of 2020, uh, and we didn't play a show the entire time. So I freaked out a little bit and and kind of, you know, felt like I 
maybe had just missed, you know, everything I'd worked for and everything I'd built by, you know, that year kind of, it was just going to be a huge year. We were on tour with Miranda Lambert when that, all that started. And yep. it was just, it, I don't know. And I, I kind of freaked out, man. And so I um, moved to Nashville. Hallie Ray and I were actually broken up at the time. And I was like, whatever. I packed up all my stuff in my truck, stopped at our ranch in East Texas <laughs> for a couple of nights um, and then uh, drove the rest of the way to Nashville. I was there for two years and then uh, moved back to Texas. I live uh, just north of San Antonio now. So that's awesome. It's man. uh, I'm. I knew I wasn't going to go. I never would have gone if it wasn't for COVID. Um, I, I didn't have to. I mean, we were doing great and, and everything was going our way and we were selling a bunch of tickets and having yeah. hits. And um, <clears throat> so when that happened, I was like, man, I, I got to get out of here for. And I was living in Austin, Texas. And, you know, I'd made a little money at the time and, and had been gone for like five, six years. I hadn't been home yeah. more than a couple of days in a long time. And all of a sudden I was home for a whole year. And, um, you know, I was kind of. I didn't handle it great. I was kind of doing some stuff I shouldn't have been doing, and I was like, I gotta get out of here, and I did. And and then I I got back, and ever since I've moved back, man, I've written probably six, seven, eight of my favorite songs I've ever Correct, written. Yeah. So just you're being, living now in what is mm-hmm. inspiring you to yeah. write. Yeah, my music. dad, my yeah. dad and I bought a ranch and uh, out just uh, west of San Antonio a bit, and um, it's called Hit Record Ranch, and I've been taking a bunch of songwriters out there, and I've written. It's just my soul Dude, is awesome. my soul is so much more complete when I'm in home Texas. in Texas. So yeah. it was uh I did what I had to do, but I got back as quick as I could. Yeah. I wanna back up. So Hallie, mm-hmm. y'all y'all broke up for a little bit. Where did y'all meet? Uh man, it's kind of a funny story. Um buddy of mine, Gus West, I was playing the San, uh, Stanford Rodeo uh, in West Texas. I think it's the oldest rodeo in Texas. Um and uh I got a real good cowboy Gus West lives out there and and uh he was like 20 at the time I look back at this now he's like 19 or 20 years old but he booked a talent for the rodeo somehow <laughs> and they let Gus do it and I didn't know him from Adam you know yeah. we just we went out there to play it's when yeah. I was still in a van and uh he had gone to Oklahoma State and Stillwater Oklahoma for like I think you know a couple months and, yeah and uh partied a little too hard yeah I guess so he come home he didn't he didn't go too long but he uh after that rodeo the first time we played there might have been the second time but uh you know he said hey there's this girl you need to meet hallie ray light and i just loved the name hallie ray light and i was like that's got to go in a song for sure so i started kind of writing a song with hallie so ray you Lee. before you met her you put this oh, yeah. name in a song oh yes oh yeah you and talk so, about a way to you know yeah and i had no heart. you know i wasn't i yeah. wasn't trying to go meet anybody or anything but anyway yeah. so we ended up playing in stillwater several several months later and i'd kind of you know we kind of contacted each other. I don't even remember how, who, con- or I think it was Gus who set it up. He got her to come out. And anyway, she, uh, she came out to a show and we kind of talked a little bit here and there for like eight, nine months. And I'd kind of write that song while we were talking and stuff and then ended up finishing it. And she came out to hear it one night at Kane's Ballroom in Tulsa. We played a sold out show there and, and, uh, we hung out till like five or six in the morning and been doing it ever since. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I like to live vicariously through y'all social media, whether it's Instagram or TikTok. Yeah, she's the she's the best, man. I mean, just uh, the most lovely human being I've ever met. Yeah, she is so good. And now you got a little one on the way. We have a human being on the way. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's not uh, just sometimes I freak out about it. It's not just Ruger, right? Ruger anymore. That's our chocolate love. Man. Yeah. So I mean. Oh yeah, yeah she's so afford. worried too that he's gonna feel neglected or like you know because he's always she's he's always been her baby yeah i'm like baby he's a dog he'll be all right yeah. you know he'll he's good so you talk about going back to the music side you started i mean you're saying 10 12 years old you started saying hey i think i can sing some country music at what point like take me back to the beginning of you know signing your first record label and like at mm-hmm. what point did you say okay like this thing actually might um out? You know what? Because you've had some hits, brother. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, oh, thank you. Some. Yeah, I've been I've been real blessed, man. It's a, uh, it's bigger and better than anything that you know I ever thought it could really get. You know, my biggest goal when I first started, I was like, if we could ever sell out Billy Bob's in Fort Worth, you know, that'd be yeah. massive. Uh, and now we do double that around the country. Yeah. So it's a, uh, you know, I just I feel guilty asking God for any more than He's already given me. But um, it keeps growing and, and getting better. But uh, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, I started playing guitar. My older brother, Tyler, six years older than me, he was really, yeah. really good songwriter. He was into, to, you know, Guy Clark and Rodney Crowell and Steve Earle and James McMurtry um, and 
I mean, so many good songwriters when I was, I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old. He was in high school listening to him and he was writing songs and playing guitar. And I just wanted to do what Big Brother was doing. You know yeah. I mean? He could have been an ice skater and I'd have probably been a professional ice skater. So you really um, think you could? No, absolutely okay, not. Okay. No, no way. I would be a failed, I would, I would have quit a long time ago, but I just wanted to do what, what Big Bro wanted to yeah. do and, or was doing. And, uh, he was really the one that, you know, was like, man, you're, you know, you, you got something here. You know, I was, I, I wrote some songs that, uh, when I was just a little kid that I think he, you know, he, he's, he's smart, man. He's intelligent and, and, uh, knows good songs and, and, um, uh, you know, doesn't, uh, the beer back road truck songs don't do it for him. And, uh, and so he was the one that really steered me towards these great songwriters. Um, and I, don't know, I just identified with it at a young age and I started, wanting to be these guys i wanted to be steve earl i wanted to be rodney corral the houston kid like i was infatuated with them and uh you know all these years later i'm still trying to be those guys you're getting after it where um uh, when you think about parker mccollum right now and like i said you've just got some unbelievable hits you really do. thank you I, it's probably on my i try to do like a top five list when i'm singing in the shower i think you have two i'll take it Maybe three. Rest, to, rest of my life, um, which is complete banger. Thank you. I burn it down. I'm stoned. Thank you. Probably right now. I uh, I, I appreciate the <laughs> being on the shower playlist a lot because I never take a shower and don't listen to music, and uh, <laughs> so I I feel that I get it. And yeah, I, that's very appreciated. Um. So, but the gold chain cowboy. Mm -hmm. Like, at what point did that just? Man, you know, I just didn't have a record title, and uh, you know, I had tried to write a song you know, for a, quite a while and around that kind of idea. And uh, I didn't have a record title and they kept, you know, I was kind of, it was my first record or first record on major label. And, and I really was wanting to like, let them know that, Hey, I do what I want. I'm not, there's no formula here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, and so that's why that album cover is what it is. It's the worst album cover probably in the history of country music. But I was just going through this weird thing at the time of, you know, we did it in like my living room. I had had this photographer Tyler Conrad come over. I'm like, hey, just he took like three pictures. Yeah, and I was like, that's the, like I just wanted. I was trying to like really lay it down that like, hey, I'm, I'm in, I'm the ball is in my court. I'm driving the truck. You yeah, know, this is uh, and because that's 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 how it always worked. I never wanted that to change. And so, um, which I've never really had good album artwork. Anyways, that's never been my my thing or my focus. Uh, yeah, I just try to write good songs. So. But it, it was never like uh, the Limestone Kid, which was my first record. I never really, that wasn't really a, a, a hoping people would call me that or that would be a nickname. That was just like a concept in my head of, of you know the way I viewed those times in my life, who I was at that time, and 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 uh, you know the our, the ranch that I spent a ton of time at when I was a kid, worked for my granddad's in Limestone County, and so we all ran around there. I mean, just wide ass open for you, you know years and uh some of the best times of my life and so you know limestone county was pretty you know it was it was a yeah. held holds still to this day holds a special place for me so it's kind of where that idea came from and then you know gold chain cowboy was kind of the same thing it was just this concept in my head you know of, of trying to put together what to call everything that i do and that i was doing at the time the songs i was writing at the time so um you know i i can understand why you know, it, I get the reference for sure. It kind of becomes a nickname kind of thing, but um, it's you know there, that was never really the intention. I meant just, to be, yeah, yeah. It just kind of well, it just makes it. And you've got, I mean, you've got you know great swag and oh, all thank that. you. I just, yeah, I mean, I grew up just north of Houston, man. I yeah. I was always watching MTV Cribs. I liked rappers too. You know, I, I like I love music and uh, Dude, I love that. Yeah. Hey, okay, give me a top three right now. I don't care uh, genre. I don't care, but top three artists: uh, Lil Wayne, Slim Thug. Um, you know, I, I've always been a huge Biggie Smalls fan. I've always loved 50 Cent, um, you know, and, and, yeah. and they were all gangbangers. Like, they all really grew up yeah. living that. And uh, and so their whole, you know, I mean, the, the I have a car addiction. You know, like I love cars. That all comes from those guys, like watching MTV Cribs and being like, damn, I want to have a big house and a bunch of whips and, and some jewelry too. You know, I just want to have it on. Dude, I love I just want to have it on. to me, Bart. I just want to have it on 500 acres, yeah. you know, it, with some with some cows and some horses and, and uh, you know, kind of my own version of it. But uh, people have always kind of made fun of it. You know, they're like the gold chains and the diamond watch and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's 
I like it, you know, and, and I like to kind of take advantage of what I get to do for a living. You know, when you're an totally. artist and, and you're a performer and you're in the public eye like that, you know, you kind of can get away with, you know, I mean, you want to, you know, have a little style and, and stand out and have your own thing. So um, there Absolutely. was really nobody yeah. in, in country music wearing, you know, heavy starch jeans and square toe double stitch boots that, you know, were rock and gold chains and Diamond presidential out, yeah. Rolexes. So I was just kind of always... You know, it always kind of gravitated towards it. It seemed like its own thing. I, I mean, I got the root beer on right now. Dude, so. I, I love jewelry, man. I like, I'm I, with you. I like fine leather. I like diamonds. Yeah. I like gold. I like just nice things and work hard and, you know, um, treat yourself when you, when you work hard. So totally. Um, now it's kind of changing now, you know, it's more in real estate and trying to buy land and, you know, a little yeah. smarter investments, but, uh, um, that is certainly where it comes from. And it never really bothered me that, you know, some people didn't didn't really vibe with it i kind of like that honestly yeah different breed i would say i'd probably hate me too so (laughs) so i want to back up on the vehicle side because you like your whips your dad's been in the car business for yeah that's real that's that's a large part of where that comes from for sure so what's the i mean what's your prized possession in the garage right now um man i don't have anything too crazy i just love american muscle um i like classics but i don't like putting up with them and i'm not a a mechanically minded person at all so I'm not. I ain't working on them in the garage, you know. Um, What's your dream? Like your dream car, if you had to choose one. Man, I think I've I've kind of got them. I mean, I I like foreign cars a little bit. I've kind of gone through a phase where I wanted one, but do you have one? Uh, I do not have any foreign. No, gotcha. I've got. Uh, uh, I guess Halley's Range Rover is foreign, but um, no, I've got a, a Halley's Hellcat. whipping the range, man. I like yeah, it. Yeah, she's she loves that car too. <laughs> um, I've got a Red Eye Hellcat Challenger wide body that I love. It's one of my favorite cars I've ever had. Um, I've got a C8 Z06 mid-engine Corvette, and then I've got a uh, 2016 C7 seven-speed manual Z06 yeah. Corvette that's nasty. It's all cammed out and aftermarket headers and pulleys and stuff. It's it's a loud and obnoxious kill-yourself car. Like it's that car bites, uh, and so does that Hellcat. But um I, I mean i never drive my drive my dodge more than i mean every day that's my daily yeah but i just love i just i don't know man and some you know tomorrow I'm, i'll wake up and be like i'm selling them all and the next day i'll be like i'm buying another one so but no matter what you're driving you're bumping 50 and a lot of the times i mean i can go from 50s prime i can right. go from 50 cent to ryan adams to chris knight to lil wayne in you know 15 minutes so yeah who do you think um I always wonder this, and, like, I know y'all are all in the same space now, but, like, when you think about country music, like, right now, like, who's at the top, if you would say country music? I mean, I don't think anybody ever catches Wallen, you know? Um, I know it's a different kind of country. Um, you know, it's a lot more hip-hop-based, yeah. and, um, you know, so if you really care to, like, dissect it that much, which I don't, you know, I, I don't – I don't um, – really care what people call certain kinds of music you know yeah um, totally. if, if if i believe it when they open their mouth and they sing it if i believe them like like i believe morgan when he sings those songs yeah i buy it um you know i believe laney wilson when she sings and opens her mouth and sing. yeah I, I believe her i buy it i'm like that's yes you're 100 percent. i'm i get what you're putting down and then and that's not that way for everybody um and I'm sure that that's subjective for everybody. You know, they like people that you may like or vice versa. But, um, uh, I mean, if you want to talk about just country music, I mean, just old, you know, traditional yeah, yeah. country music, um, man, I don't know who's, I don't know who's killing it more than Kojo right now, you know? Yeah. And he's so good. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, his guitar playing has come so far. Uh, God, his his on, voice man. is so good. He has such good songs. Um, you know, I don't know if he's writing as much anymore as he was when he was younger. I know when you have family and stuff, I'm sure that gets. I'm just, I'm probably about to find out. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's already. Yeah. You know, in, incredibly difficult to find time to write songs. Um, because uh, it's not just something you can turn off and turn on. You know, you really got to, for me, I have to go in. there. I got to yeah. go there. And I'm going, I've been going there right now lately. Um, like, I ain't lifting weights. I'm not working out. I'm not running. I'm like, yeah, you can tell. For yeah, sure. I'm sitting around and just, I'm and, oh, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going there. Like, I'm, I'm going deep. And it's a big mental thing for me. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say Kojo's got to be at the top of, of country, country music. But 
you know, yeah. when you say country music now, the the, well, the general population is is going to consider everybody that you know is played on country radio. So, um, yeah, I don't think anybody ever catches Wallen. Um, it's, it's that's a bold statement. I mean, I, I think maybe one day. I mean, but I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a me top. catch him. I think you have a chance. No, 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 no. It's it's two different. It's totally different worlds. It's completely different. Uh, there's it's no. He's a massive. You're selling out baseball stadiums two nights in a row, dude. We played ten shows with him last year. Like we're about to play MetLife two nights with him in May. Um, so and we stick out like a sore thumb on that tour. Like I mean, I think we come out and half that stadium knows who we are and they're vibing with it. And the other half is like. This Who is, is not, this? Yeah, yeah, because it's Bailey Zimmerman, then Ernest, then us, and Morgan. Yeah, and it's just different. And I love no, all I'm those boys, yeah, dude. Yeah. I love those boys. Yeah. Bailey is such a good kid. Ernest has been so good to me. Morgan's been so good to me. Like That's I truly, good no, I get what you're saying. They're they're yeah. good dudes, man, and they're really talented. Um, and they're really good songwriters, uh, especially Ernest and and Morgan. They're good songwriters, man. And uh, it may not be someone's style or what they want to hear, but you know, from one songwriter to another, I'm like. It's good, dude. You have your thing, and it's good. It works. Yeah. When's that um, MetLife show? I think it's in May. I'm they're 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 the ones out. that he had to cancel last year, so we're okay. just remaking them. All. They're the only make... ones we're doing with him this year. I think maybe Pittsburgh and Philly or, or uh, Philly. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna make that trip for sure. But yeah, it's it's country music is is so such a vague term now. Uh, I don't even worry about it. Um, and uh, I just try to. You know, worry about what I'm doing, Do focus on what I'm doing. Yeah, man, it's so – I'm like – I can't imagine being any – doing any better. Like, I mean, I'm, I hope we do, and you want to. You know, you work really hard to, to keep it growing and keep it moving. But yeah. it's just so much bigger than, you know, anybody ever thought I was going to go and do it. Um, if you weren't doing country music right now, what do you think you'd be doing? Man, I don't know. I have no idea. Ranching? Yeah, probably ranch real estate. Yeah, honestly, I think I'd really enjoy that. Just because you get to see so many totally, different yeah. pieces of property, and you get to have access to them, um, and that's just such a in Texas that's a pretty tight world, especially big pieces of big pieces of land. You know, when you're talking several thousand acre ranches and beyond, those guys it's a tight circle. Yeah, um, and that's a and I know some of the guys in it, some of my good buddies are in it, and I I think that would be I'd really enjoy that. Man, it's stuff like what we're talking about right now is why not only I started this show, but why it's been as successful as it's been is because country music's changing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's different people and demographics and geographies that are listening to country music because of people like Wallen and et cetera. Yeah. Everybody wants to hunt. Everybody wants to fish now. Everybody wants to drive a pickup truck. So, like, I really do appreciate you coming on the show and, like, talking yeah, like dude. this because it's like – you know, farming's cool again. Yeah. Like, that's kind of You know what's funny is I've actually never farmed. Like, I slung seed. Yeah. You know, and pulled a bat wing mower and mowed for, for sure, hours and yeah. hours a day, but I've never, like, farmed. Yeah. Like, I've always ranched, you know, yeah, breaking sure. horses and working cows. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of similarities there, but to me, they are two different things. Yeah. Farming and ranching yeah, are two sure. different things. Yeah, and it's two, kind of two different kind of people. Yeah. Um, oh, dude. You know what I mean? It's it, like, you know both. It is different. And, and, <laughs> I can't wait. We it's get, not like one's we're better take than the a pig other, and it's just going to be a farmer and a cowboy walks into a bar. Yeah. I, I'm no, I'm no cowboy, man. I like the cowboy. I grew up <laughs> doing it a lot. Um, I would definitely raise my kids that way. Yeah. But I don't walk around, you know, you know, preaching to everybody that I'm, you know, cowboy this and cowboy that. I just that wasn't how it was when I was a kid. I no. wasn't raised like that, man. You just you did what you did, and um, we didn't have camera phones and stuff when and i guess we did kind of in the later years but we still never really took pictures or nothing you know there was no you didn't show off how cowboy you were dude you grew um, up you grew up in rural america yeah, just like and myself, you just yeah you just it wasn't even a thing then you yeah. know now it's like you got a cowboy on social media so, and, I, and i don't care man i think you know the more more awareness you bring to you know western lifestyle and culture you know the, the longer it's going to stay alive you know people always say cowboys are dying cowboys are going away like you know, then then let people dress up like them. Let people let cowboy hats be a, a a popular thing and boots be a popular thing and and have these kids growing up with good manners and and try to you know yeah. some of the ethics and the um you know just the staples of of what do you want to call it country or or farm and ranch and whatever yeah. that lifestyle like 
there's so many good things about it that go beyond just getting your hands dirty and working you know like it's a lifestyle good manners yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir taking your hat off when you meet a lady uh opening the door for people being genuine and, and keep it going just i'm dude i, I was how i was raised dude. i believe in it so much uh, and i don't want to ever want to preach to people about it this is the most i've ever probably talked about it and you know outside of my yeah circle but um i just i'm like you know let people let people get a little taste of that life and they're going to realize that there's a reason why it's it's stuck around as long yeah. as it has man it's good that slow and easy life away from all the bs with a good woman and on a little piece of land and it sounds so cliche but it is for a reason dude it's good and it's good for your soul it's good for your bloodline it's good for your everything it's good for business and uh you know i think the more and more people that find out about that the better that's gold man yeah. i hope so Dude, that's so. freaking awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, and like... Just don't be goofy about it. Don't embarrass us. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and Parker, it's not... We're At some point, we're going to have an issue, right? I mean, labor's already a pain in the ass, as you know, when it comes to working mm-hmm. on the ranch. And like, land shortage, Texas, Florida, like, people are buying real estate and hopefully they keep ranching and farming, but yeah. a lot of them are putting homes on it. So it's good to hear stuff like that. I know. I have a house in one of those right now. Yeah. I drive around and I'm like, dude, this was just someone's ranch. I know. You're probably kids, you know, they're probably grown now, but they were probably kids. And yeah, you know I mean? It's, it's so it's, uh, it's the place we just bought out west of San Antonio has a conservation easement on it and it's on the Nueces river for like a half a mile and it can never be divided yeah. forever. Those conservation. Easements. And that was my, I yeah. was like, boom, this is the place yeah, we're buying. Sure. I mean, I was like, you know, you don't ever have to worry about your neighbors. You know, there actually is a guy down the highway a little bit that uh, what he does is buy big ranches and sells them in 50 to 100 acre, you know, 25, 50, 75, 100 acre parcels. And, you know, that's better than 450 spec yeah. homes, you know. Um, but still, even then, I'm like, I don't know, man. I just – I'm – that is where uh, I'm getting as far away slowly but surely from – you know, crowded places as I can, and uh, especially being on the road and stuff. You know, you want to come off the road. When you and, come home, you want to chill yeah. out. I go to, I go sometimes. I, tomorrow, I'm gonna go straight to my ranch. Yeah. So as soon as I, I'll get home at night, and I'll wake up tomorrow and head there about nine in the morning. That's awesome. In Texas, I mean, you can do that, and I feel like, and I want you to just correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at like, okay, the peaks of right now Parker's music life, obviously beautiful great wife you got the baby coming personal side but acm mm-hmm. was it new male new male artist, artist of the year mm-hmm. 2022 which i want you to talk about and then playing the houston rodeo yeah that's it that was it <laughs> dude, I mean, that was it that's all i wanted yeah that's all i wanted dude i want Real. you I to got just, the buckle on right now yeah i mean i would just want you to walk me through like number one getting the call yeah, that was incredible. I cried 100%. No, yeah. not scared to admit it. I had wanted it so bad. I'd thought about it for so long. There were so many times where I didn't think I was good enough or I wasn't going to do it anymore. And and uh, I was actually driving home uh, one evening, and um, Hallie Ray was at the house. I was almost there, and uh, my manager, Enzo, called me. And, yeah, love Enzo. And he's like, hey, you know, the, the rodeo this, rodeo that, rodeo, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? rodeo this and rodeo that you know he's talking about schedules and times and you know this we got to do this for this and i'm like what is all this about and he's like oh you're playing it and so that was kind of how he was messing with me but <laughs> dude I, I, I this is a true story i pulled my truck over i'll cry right now talking about it and i called my dad and then and i think he was crying too but it was it was uh i mean it's seventy four thousand people we sold it out our first time there um i mean i just can't even I had a, I think I had my second number one the same day that we played the Houston Rodeo. So it was just a crazy, crazy time. Um, it's, uh, I can't explain it. That's my favorite football team. That's their home stadium. You're out there in the middle, you know. And, and it's the Houston Rodeo. It's the Houston man. Rodeo, man. It's, uh, it was, it was everything I wanted, dude. And, and it's all of a sudden it was over. Damn. That was it. It's crazy, man. So it's like I can't. That's the most nervous I've ever been in my whole life. Was sitting on that. I was in, hidden in a road case on the side of the deal, and then popped out of it and ran up on the stage. And what was the first song that you played? I think we did "Wait Outside." Was what we were kicking that show off with, maybe. Dude, 
That's unbelievable. Yeah, or maybe it was To Be Loved By You. I don't know. I remember the second song yeah. I slipped. I've never fallen on stage. Knock on wood, probably fall tonight. But I slipped. <laughs> uh, I turned around and the side of my boot kind of caught the stage like that and uh, slipped out. But I just went down to a knee real quick, popped right back up, yeah. right in time to Boom. sing. Yeah. And so, you know, you're rotating stage, only half the stadium can see it. And uh, the only person that said any, there wasn't nothing on Twitter about it, nothing. And my dad, <laughs> when I got off stage, he goes, you Sweet. eat shit? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It was good though. I mean, I was just you. I can. I'll never yeah. be able to put into words that feeling of adrenaline and what that was like stepping out there that night. It was, it was crazy, man. Yeah, you've had some great stories. I mean, when you think about being on tour, whether they're with you or you're mm-hmm. with them, like who's been your favorite so far? Uh, man, I don't know how I'd pick. You know, Dirk Bentley was the first you know huge act i guess really miranda was yeah. um she took us out for a run but um dirks was the first one to put me on a whole tour and uh, it was actually with riley and yep. um he was really really good to me man and i just played a thing me him and Ari lou Har- uh me him and uh, emmy lou harris played a acoustic song swap the other night in austin for our buddy that was getting inducted to the texas hall of fame and hadn't seen him in a while and man just loved dirk such a good dude uh thomas rett took us out the next year um that was he's so pure dude just as good as god can make him i mean a good dude um and uh really really enjoyed getting to spend time with him and when you're when you're touring man it's not you're not hanging out all the time like yesterday i never saw Corey or george yeah all day i mean my dad was in town we went and played golf he was on the road with me but nice where'd you play uh, oh did you play at golf club no we played to chessy okay yeah it was it was rowdy it was really good course very yeah. hard played very bad um but you know <laughs> it's to talk about it it's uh <laughs> um tours a little you know some days you may play basketball or work out together or play golf together and then you may not see them for a whole weekend yeah. so um everybody's busy and sleeping when they can and yeah. doing this and that but um and then morgan was great dude i mean i didn't see him uh really at all the whole tour but i mean you know his people were good to us took yeah. good care of us um you know you're playing a baseball stadium so it's you know it's pretty hectic it's a lot yeah, going on and he is sure. a mega superstar so it's not like he's just kicking it in the hallway um but they've all they've all been good to me man and they i hope they they understand what uh how big of a deal it is for us to get out there on those stages and play in front of them. you just grow your brand so quickly that way um, I mean, I could not be more grateful. It's It's been instrumental in yeah. us selling a bunch of tickets on our own across the country. For sure. And you've had some great times with uh, Co. Oh, uh, that's my boy. Yeah, <laughs> that's my brother. He's a good He's a good dude, man. Dude, y'all, I mean, y'all have y'all put out some hits, but I just feel like that relationship between you and Co is awesome. Yeah, it's good, man. You know, I, I never get to see him. You know, we, we played both played the NFR out in Vegas yeah. in December, and, and we got into it a little bit out there. It was a good time. But um, <laughs> it's uh, you know, just always so busy. You know, your schedules never line up. He lives three hours north of me. Um, so every now and then we get to swing through and, um, you know, if I'm somewhere he is, I'll pop up and sing or if he's, he yeah. came up and sang love with us in Vegas. That's the first time we've That's done cool. that song together live in, I don't know, three years, probably something like that. So he's, he's a, he's good, man. He's unbelievable, dude. dude and, awesome. and talented as all get out. Yeah. I mean, a I singing agree. son of a gun. Yeah, totally. Can rip. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, you. Some of your songs, man. Rest of my life. Thank you. That's. I think that might be me. Rest of my life. That's like, it. That's certainly top three of I've ever written. That my favorite that I've ever written. Um, and I wrote that song in thirty minutes, and just I hadn't written a song in months. It was during COVID. It's the only song I wrote during COVID. Yeah. And it just boom. I was in the. Sh- I'd had the melody and you were in the shower. I'd, I'd recorded the melody the night before, and I'd gotten in the shower and I played yes. the recording while I was in the shower. <clears throat> And it literally had like soap all over me, and I'm humming. And I'm like, boom, that's it. And I got you're out, like, and just it never happens like that, man. And then you were like, I wrote the song, and there's a picture frame. Yeah, hey, there really was. It was actually a big mirror, little to the side. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a mat. It was like a six foot tall mirror that leaned up against the wall, or hunt was hanging on the wall, and it was crooked. It wasn't actually a picture frame, but oh, mm-hmm. damn. All right, that's all good. Um. Outside of music, man. I mean, you're a big sports guy. I feel mm-hmm. like me and you most likely disagree on on most of it, but football. You got the Texans. Yeah, I love all um, Houston sports, man. Just yeah. 
Astros, Texans. I mean, mm-hmm. Houston, the Texans, I feel really good about it. We got to talk a little bit before we sat down, and yeah. we're all on the same page. CJ's a stud. Coach is a stud. Yeah. You've got you've got some hot takes on who's coming on the team, which is awesome. We're getting into baseball season. Yeah. Give me your, <laughs> give me your pick. I don't and know. I, don't be biased. Just say, hey, we got a we got a squad. Actually, Houston yeah, that we do, man. Year. I mean, putting Hader in the bullpen is yeah. is huge. That's a massive addition if he can stay healthy, which I think he will. Um, but we've been so good that that baseball team has been so good for like. I mean, I think this will be if we go to the ALCS this year, it'll be like eight in a row, which is unbelievable. I don't think Bregman's been in the league a year that he didn't go to the ALCS. And then y'all had that little shindig happen with the. Yeah, the I love it. I wish they'd cheat every year. Let's win every year. <laughs> but they didn't cheat. Do though, it. I mean, I mean, I think they did what everybody else does. Okay, you know, yeah. I mean, it's dude. It's it's if you can get a sign and know what he's going to throw. Totally. Get the sign. Yeah, you got to guard know. your stuff better. Play yeah. your play your side of the ball better. Um, do I believe they were using buzzers and all that stuff? No, that's no, dumb. yeah. Um, did you play any sports like growing yeah, up? Yeah, a little bit. I wasn't very good. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody in my family's a really good athlete. I was probably not I was probably the, the worst one. I could play a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What um when it comes to so, you know, Texans football, Strohs, baseball, basketball. You, I feel like you actually have a pretty good relationship, maybe. I'm curious. I, I always have a top three, which is four to me on who I want to come on the show. Mm-hmm. And actually, few of them are Texas. My uncle, who is now the CEO of Ducks Unlimited, was a politician. Him and W. Really? Are good buddies. I'd love W. Jeb is a good friend who sits on our board at Ag America. So, I, W needs to come on the show. President George W. Bush, I'd like you on. Um, Matthew McConaughey, Texas. Yeah. I really want Jimmy Butler, man. Yeah, he's a man, dude. Jimmy, I mean, do y'all have any type of relationship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy and I've we've played basketball together. Um, you know, I've got I got I have some good <laughs> stories with Jimmy, but um, he uh, are he you actually, allowed to elaborate? Like I want to. No, good story, no, okay. no. I, I, I can't okay. do that. But uh, <laughs> it just makes you laugh. When I think about it. Um, <laughs> But uh, he, he loves country music. Yeah, right? loves man, and and he was the one to hit me. He's from Tomball, which is like you know twenty minutes from Conroe, where I grew up. And uh, I had known who he was, and then once I started, you know, kind of, um, yeah, I guess he kind of found out about my music or whatever, and found out I was from Conroe. So he actually messaged me on Instagram, or maybe I think he made a text me, got my number from management or something, and, and he's like, "Man, I didn't know you're from Conroe. Like, we got to link up, whatever." Yeah. And. Uh, and so I've gone to see him play a couple times. I saw him play in the Eastern Conference Finals in, in Miami against Boston. Um, saw him play in Dallas. And then in November, I think it was our last Wallen show, he came to it. And I saw him in the hallway. And uh, he's like, man, we're playing the San Antonio Spurs tomorrow. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I, I'm flying home to San Antonio in about yeah. 45 minutes. So uh, we went out to the game the next night and saw him. And he just – He's just down to earth, good, good dude. dude, man. Always comes and says what's up right before tip off. Yeah, and, I mean, literally come, hey, how you doing? Gives Hallie a hug, and then boom, he's they tip off. It's Time he's just go. yeah, he's a normal dude, man. He just so happens to be a good freak player. athlete. He's a beast. Yeah, he's dude's on a real. I mean, right now you had LeBron who left Miami. I mean, he has taken over that team and yeah. took him to the twice. championship. Twice. twice, been there twice. Yeah, so Damn. I'd love to see him get it done, man. Yeah. I don't know who. I, I don't think anybody does because the Nuggets are so. I mean, they're they're so good, man. The Nuggets. So is, that are, your, is that your take? Nuggets this year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. think the Celtics get it done. I mean, I, you know, the East is a little different than the West. Yeah, they, totally. You know, they're. I saw this morning like forty-seven and twelve or something. I didn't realize their record was that good, but man, it's. Uh, once you get to the Eastern Conference Finals and the in the NBA Finals, it's different, especially when you yeah. got to play those real stout West Coast teams uh, or Western Conference teams like the Nuggets. They're they're complete. Yeah, that's awesome. And then you know, last but not least, golf. I mean, we've yeah, got I some mutual it. friends over at Whispering Pines. I mean, mm-hmm. what's your handicap right now? Not real good, dude. Probably maybe a ten, maybe. That's not bad though. That's not very good. But everybody, well, like my dad, my money, uncle, my brother, they're all single digit handicaps. Oh, yeah? Everybody in my family's a stick. I'm sitting me. at three and a half right now. You can golf? Yeah. That's ball that's golfing your ball. Yeah. Yeah. That's golfing your I, ball. Three and a half. I've shot eighty like four four times, I think, now in the last couple of years. Haven't been able to shoot have not been able to shoot seventy nine. Um shot under par on the front of the back a couple of times, but yeah. I just can't put it down. there's two different golfers in me. It's two different golfers. 
Are you like drinking some cocktails? No, on the- I don't really drink. A little bit every now and then. Very, very little. Um, Definitely not on the golf course. Mm-mm. I, I'm, I like, I love golf, dude. Like, I like to dress right. I like to play a really nice course. I like to really compete. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit the ball. You're trying to get it done. Yeah, I don't like the whole uh, blackout on the golf course. Yeah, that whole like golf culture that's like made golf popular, which I'm sure is good for the game in some sort or another, is great and all. But it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I ain't out there. Uh-uh. I'm like, I, it's it's kind of it's kind of dorky, but um, yeah, I like to I like to play, man, for real. Yeah. I could tell. I mean, I like, you know, I live vicariously through your social media. You're a big TikTok guy. You are. I mean, you might not be the one filming it. No, yeah, I hadn't been on TikTok in like a year. Well, but I think, have, uh, yeah. I think um, Bailey you just are, did the basketball video the other day. Yeah. Which, Bailey posts all that stuff for me. So Hopefully you, because what was it? You made the first shot, which means you could eat dinner, and then you missed the last two, which means no dessert for Correct. the weekend. Correct. Which Still I was doing like this intermittent fasting, so I wasn't really eating dessert anyways, but... Um, our tour catering has some pretty good desserts, so every now and then I'll cheat and I can't pass it up. So yeah, I get that. But I I stuck to it. I didn't have dessert. Good for you. All right, two segments where we lock this thing down. All right, mm-hmm. this or that. So okay. I want you to, I'm going to give you this or that, and then sure. you, you give me one. But I'm going first. You could choose one of these two to play professional sports: football, okay. basketball, and baseball. And you are going to win a championship in one of them. I can pick one sport. Yep. Um, those are the only three. Yep. And what's the position you're going to play? I mean, I would probably want to play quarterback on an NFL team and win a Super Bowl. Is that a good answer? It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It is. Um. All right. Last one. I hope so. Ask me one. All right. Uh, Super Bowl performing at the Super Bowl, or performing at uh. Um. New York, like Broadway, when they drop the ball for New Year's Eve. Super Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl. But I would get ripped on Twitter because the entire world's going to go, who in the hell is this guy and why is he performing on on the Super Bowl? That would be great. (laughs) All right, you asked me one. Um, Okay. Would you rather have um, free pickup trucks for the rest of your life? Or one, or one free pickup truck for the rest of your life, brand new, anything you want? Every or, night. Or one free race car, sports car, muscle car for the rest of your life. And I, it changes every year? Or? And just you just get whatever you want. It's free forever. Oh, I'm going like muscle. I think so, sports. yeah. Yeah, you too? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because me and you were the same. Like the truck, which most likely is the daily driver, me and mm-hmm. you were changing every damn year. Yeah. I've actually, dude, my, my dad always makes fun of me because I was, I was going through them pretty quick, but I've actually kept this Dodge for a while. I like it. Do you? Mm-hmm. I know Dodge, people talk a lot of trash on Dodge, but this truck's been good to me. I've seen the Dodges, like, that you've been cruising around in them. I need to check them out. I've been, I mean, it's been Chevy or Ford my whole life. Yeah. But. Same. I'd never, my granddad, it's all he drove was Dodge, and he'd drive the living piss out of it and put it at the ranch and go buy another one, drive the living piss out of it, he shot a hole through the door, one on with a thirty thirty one time. I mean, just you can't imagine what he would do to these pickup trucks. Um, and so, like, when we were kids, he gave, he, we all kind of were designated one. Like, I, there was a time in high school where I drove his, like, 1997 single cab black Dodge Dually one ton. Yeah. Uh, with self tinted windows peeling off uh, to high school for, like, three months. You had some my, boom in the back. When my mom had taken my truck. So, yeah. it's uh, with a gooseneck hitch in the back. So, um, you know, but I I always like Chevy and Ford, and I bought this Dodge, and I like it too. Dodge, I got one more too. Uh, hunting or fishing, if you had to choose between the two. I mean, I would say hunting, just because you know it's. It, I feel like the your opportunity. There's just way more opportunities yeah. to hunt than there are to you know. Because I I really love to bass fish. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I really over. I like deep sea fishing and all that stuff, but just you know the simplicity of bass fishing, I think, is what really draws me to it. And it's what I grew up doing primarily. Um, but dude, I love bow hunting whitetail. I mean, I love it. It's uh, that the fair chase, low fence, free range freak that isn't supposed to be there that shows up and you get him with your bow at 20, 25, 30 yeah. yards is my dream scenario every year. So, I don't Texas, think I, you talk about hunting. Golly. Um, it's great. Some, yeah. And you can, I mean, dude, there's axis deer, free range axis deer walking around in our place. So, yeah. and you're going bow over rifle for sure. Everybody I've asked that, and they say the same thing. Yeah, I love bow hunting, man. It's just peaceful, man. It's yeah. um, 
you know, that eight point, that big 160 inch eight point I shot at my buddy Hunter's ranch this past year. Um, we hunted so hard, dude, for like six days and hadn't seen him. And he showed up on the very last morning and I dropped him. He didn't take one step. I mean, I had to have spined him or something. He kind of tried to almost duck my arrow completely. And yeah. Almost, like, it looked a little low to spine him. I never really found out, but, um, uh, he it just, that, that was the perfect scenario. And I just, I, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen. I didn't shoot a deer for two years. Yeah. So. That's hunting. Last segment. It's mm-hmm. called the biggest gamble. Uh-oh. What do you think the biggest gamble you've taken? And it can be music, personal, whatever it is. What's the biggest gamble you've taken in your life? Uh, marrying Hallie Ray was a sure thing. That wasn't a gamble. Um, Love that. Biggest gamble. Uh, probably signing a record deal. You know, I just didn't know what it was. And Randy Rogers was managing me from the t- yeah. at the time from the Randy Rogers band, and and he was the one that was like, "Man, you can be a superstar. Let's go get you a record deal in Nashville, and you know, let me kind of show you the right way to do this thing." And uh, and he's a Texas music legend, uh, and so I really, you know, him and I are very close. And and uh, he was just out at the ranch last week riding, but um, yeah, he. Uh, he was the one that pushed me to do it, and and that's probably one of the best decisions I ever made. You know, it really got me out of a, a bubble I was in you know, that I may, may not have otherwise gotten out of. So, record deal, probably. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Man, I appreciate you coming on the show Man, today. thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Let me, I mean, when you think about you now know, like, this is what we're doing, right? We're trying to shed light on rural America. Yeah. The ranchers, the farmers, who feeds us, who clothes us. Like, what makes you want to come on the show today? Like, Man, I think uh, uh, like-mindedness, um, you know, on those same things, the, the core values of, of you know, it, it doesn't even – I think it stems mostly. It's probably you know, originates with, you know, the, the Western culture and lifestyle. But, man, just working hard, you know, and, and wanting to – inspire people to do that and gen- and younger kids new n- the next generation to want to work hard and yep. earn everything you have and be handy and know how to you know um even if it's just it didn't even have to be cowboying or ranching or farming if it's just survival skills stuff like that just being outdoors uh working with your hands um having good manners man it, uh, respecting your elders like i really truly believe in that so any opportunity that i get to you know, maybe sit down and talk about that kind of stuff yeah. with and, and shed light on it. Or maybe if it takes one person out there listening and they're like, man, I I want to raise my kids like that yeah. or I want to be like that, you know, then shit, it's worth it. I love that. And thank you for the opportunity to do that. This has been great. And like I said, I really appreciate you coming on this show and talking about how you were raised. Mm-hmm. And now you've got the baby boy coming. You're going to raise him that way. And just shining the light, what we've been trying to mm-hmm. do. So as always, appreciate you coming on the show. And as always, to everybody out there, like, comment, subscribe, share, do whatever you got to do to be like a farmer.